Hi guys, I'm Chris. Today I'll be showing you guys my new imaging setup with a new telescope, Takahashi FSQ 106 EDX4. This is the fourth generation of the FSQ 106 ED series. I will shorten the name of these telescopes to just 106 so I can save some time for you guys. In this video, I'll talk about some basics about this telescope and then introduce how I built my imaging setup. Final image captured by this telescope will be shown at the end of the video. And just for the record, this is not a sponsored video. I purchased all these gears by myself based on my own research and my friend's recommendation. Nobody paid me anything to say anything about these products. So let's take a look at some basics about this telescope. I'll briefly talk about the weight, the length, the focal length, the focal ratio, and the price as well. The weight of this telescope is about 7 kilograms or 15 pounds. I can lift it with one hand with no problem. But you will have to install a handlebar on the top of your support rings in order to make this move. And we will get to that in just a sec. The length of FSQ 106 is 17 inches. What you see on the table here is not its shortest length. The lens hood is pulled out a little bit, just to give some space to install my support rings and the handlebar. The draw tube at the back of the telescope is also put out a little bit because this is my current distance setup for my images to be in focus. Also, this telescope is advertised that it can be placed in a carry-on luggage. I tried to put it in my Think Tank version 3.0 airport carry-on luggage. It worked really well and I didn't even remove all the parts attached to the back of the telescope, which makes FSQ 106 become one of the best portable telescopes to travel with. The focal length of FSQ 106 is 530 mm, which is very good for a lot of nebulas. It's not too short or too long, and if you think sometimes the view is a little bit too narrowed for some huge subjects like North America nebula, you can always use a reducer. And Takahashi has multiple options for reducers. The native focal ratio is f5.0, which I consider is fairly fast compared to a lot of other telescopes within this range of focal length especially if you live in a city where it doesn't have many clear nights. Focal ratio becomes a key factor when you try to decide which telescope to buy. The price of this telescope is $6,040, not including support rings, handlebars, some particular adapters, reducers, extenders, or eyepieces. The extenders and reducers could cost you at least another 1000 bucks. Now let me show you guys my imaging setup for this telescope. The first thing that I have is the support rings. I'm using Primalus Lab. Don't know if I pronounced that right. The size of this support rings is 125 mm. The color looks great with 106. The build quality also feels great, very great design. Then is the Vixen type dovetail plate on the bottom of this telescope for me to put it on the equatorial mount. You can find many options of color and length online. And let's take a look at the handlebar. This handlebar plays a very important role in this setup because it really helps me to put it on the equatorial mount. Otherwise, you will have to try to lift it from the bottom of the telescope and put it on the mount while trying to tighten the lock screws, which is really a pain in the ass. So the handlebar is definitely one of the most important accessories for astrophotography setup, especially for heavy telescope. Also, you can see this handlebar can be used with auto guiding setup if you have a Vixen type dovetail plate attached to your guide scope. Very great design, but for me, I don't really use it because the distance between the handlebar and the back of the imaging camera is a little bit longer than the cable can reach. Even though you can still put your guide scope on the handlebar, but I personally like to give some flexibility for my setup. Let's take a look at the small Vixen type mount here. By the way, this does not come with the original telescope package. This one allows you to put an auto guiding setup with a Vixen style dovetail plate. It's a good choice when you don't have a long cable connecting between your main imaging camera and guiding camera, and a handlebar does not support Vixen style dovetail plate. I personally use ZWO Miniscope 30mm f4 and ZWO 120mm s. Some of you might think this focal length of the guide scope is too short compared to FSQ 106, but I use a 0.73 times focal reducer, which makes the focal length of FSQ 106 become 387 mm. So the 120 mm of the focal length 
of ZWO miniscope works fine in this case. I will definitely switch to a longer guide scope when using the native focal length of FSQ106. The focus motor I'm using is also from Premier Lewis Lab, the Sesto Senso focus motor first generation. They just came up with the second generation not too long ago. I haven't looked it up yet, but the first generation works pretty well for me, and it's not that expensive, only 300 bucks, which provides you very fine focus. By the way, the temperature sensor does not come in the original package. You will have to buy it separately if you want to use the autofocus features from software like SGP that refocus with each sensory degree change of ambient temperature. Finally, I currently use all chroma filters, including H alpha 3 nanometer, oxygen 3 nanometer, sulfur 3 nanometer, and luminance, red, green, and blue filters. And they're all 31 millimeter unmounted filters. The filter wheel is ZWO A position filter wheel for either 1.25 inches mounted or 31 millimeter unmounted filters. The main imaging camera is ZWO ASI 1600 monochrome cooling camera. That's all for today. Thank you for spending your time watching to the end of this video. I hope my first gear introduction video is not that boring. Please comment below and let me know what you think of the video or my imaging setup. I'll be more than happy to help answering your questions. Hope you guys and your families stay healthy during this really tough time. Enjoy the amazing North American nebula captured by this imaging setup. I'll see you in the next video.